During this lesson you will be required to fill out a worksheet. I recommend you read through the worksheet before viewing the lesson. In order to give you time to do this, you can use the pause button at the bottom of the screen. Floors. Ground floors. Learning outcomes. By the end of this lesson you should be able to 1. List and describe 4 types of ground floor construction. 2. Sketch a section through a ground bearing concrete floor slab. And three, sketch a section through a suspended timber ground floor. These are the two most common types of ground floor construction. The function of a floor. The function of the floor is to give strength and stability, resistance to weather and ground moisture. This is all covered in part C of the technical guidance documents. Also resistance to the passage of fire, heat and sound. Concrete and timber are the main materials used for constructing floors. The choice of material is determined by the span, which is the width of the floor, um, and the required performance. In other words, is it meant to be fireproof? It's going to be concrete then. Um, is it meant to be lightweight? It'll be timber or whatever it might be. Strength of a floor. This is dictated by the choice of materials. It must support safely the dead load of the floor and its finishes, fixtures, partitions and services, also the imposed loads of the occupants and their movable furniture and equipment. Most common ground floors in older houses are suspended timber, but in newer houses concrete is used. We can see an example of the image in the right hand, bottom right hand corner there, the screen of a concrete floor being poured and screeded out. Types of ground floor construction. The first one there, number one, is the uh, ground bearing concrete slab. So this is basically a concrete slab that will sit on top of the ground. probably the most common type of concrete ground uh, concrete uh, uh, ground floor uh, construction we'll see. Number two there is the screed finished floor. Uh, this is usually placed on top of a raft foundation. Remember the concrete raft foundation we looked at in the previous lesson. So a screed finished floor is usually uh, done with sand and cement about 50 to 75 millimeters in thickness. The third type then is the suspended concrete slab. So this is where we're going to leave a void underneath the floor and we would have a concrete precast concrete slab that would be supported on the external walls from the external walls. Number four then, the last type there is the suspended timber floor, which is the traditional type of floor where we have floor joists running from the external wall to external wall or from an external wall to an internal load bearing wall and then we have our floorboards going across it. Okay so worksheet question one list and describe the four types of ground floor construction. Okay so we're going to look at each one of these uh, types of floors in a little bit more detail. So Number one there, the ground bearing concrete slab. So this is the most common type of ground floor construction these days. Uh, so first of all what we have is we have the rising walls are built up. So we can see an example there again of the rising walls are built up uh, from the top of our foundations. And these are built up to the DPC level or the damp proof course level. Here's an image there now of our DPC which has to be a minimum of 150 millimeters above our ground level. So the rising walls, which are also called the foundation walls, are built up to the DPC level. Uh, then what we have is we have compacted hardcore is filled up to the correct depth. We can see in the image on the right hand side there, the minimum thickness of hardcore uh, is 150 millimeters. This has to be filled up and leveled out and then compacted using a compacting uh, vibrator plate or a whacker plate. So 
after we have our hardcore compacted into place then what we have is we have our DPM or our damp proof membrane, membrane which is um, signified here by the yellow uh, line in the image on the right hand side so we have our DPM damp proof membrane uh, is placed on top of the hard car and sometimes we would have a, bl uh, a, a small blinding layer maybe 10 mil of sand put down on top of the hard car just to prevent the DPM damp proof membrane from getting punctured and this damp proof membrane has to be dre dressed up and over the block work as we see in this image here we can see the damp proof membrane is dressed up and over the block work to coincide with the DPC level so on top of that then we have our rigid insulation and then our concrete is positioned on top of that again and we can see in the image on the right hand side the minimum depth of our minimum thickness of our concrete slab has to be 150 millimeters so our concrete is put in place as we can see in the image here now and it's screeded out using a screeder board that uh, usually spans from uh, from our uh, external rising walls or in this case in this image here we have um, we have a trammel bar in place uh, set up to the required uh, level after the concrete is put in then it has to be finished so it's usually polished off using uh, a, flo a float either a hand float like this or maybe sometimes a power float so the ground bearing concrete slab continued so the ground supported floor slabs have uh, must have clean well compacted and well graded hard core beneath them okay so it's important that the correct hard core is put in underneath them so for example crushed stone or concrete should be used and it should be free from impurities the hard core must be free from impurities such, such as sulfates okay so worksheet question two have a go now at sketching a section through a ground bearing concrete floor slab just like the one in the image here on the right so the second one then is the screed finished floor so what we have is we have sand and cement screed we can see an example here of the sand and cement screed so it's just a mixture uh, usually a fairly dry mixture of sand and cement that's put in uh, to the required uh, thickness and depth and uh, leveled off by hand and this is usually put in like I said before on top of a raft foundation so we have our sand and cement screed with a damp proof membrane and rigid insulation placed on top of a raft foundation so if we look in the image on the right hand side there we have our raft foundation cast on top of our compacted hard car so on top of the raft foundation then we have a rigid insulation and then on top of that then we have our damp proof membrane which again is dressed up and over the block work and then we have our sand and cement screed on top of that this is a common method used for ground floor construction on a raft foundation Tor type then is the suspended concrete slab. This is usually used on uh, um, this is usually used on ground that is sloped or ground that has poor bearing capacity. So in other words, if the ground can take the weight of uh, the actual floor slab, or if the ground is prone to volume change. In other words, if it's going to dry out excessively or take on a lot of moisture, a lot of water, or whatever throughout the year. So if it's going to be expanding and contracting we'd use the suspended concrete slab um, um, methods used, there's a number of different methods that can be used for the suspended concrete slab the first one there is the precast reinforced slabs and we can see, as we can see in the image, the photograph there on the right hand side the precast reinforced slab which is cast, um, precast uh, in, in a factory brought onto site and then uh, put in place there uh, usually spanning from um, external to external wall, load bearing walls. The second type is called the block and beam and this is the uh, example in the image that we have, the diagram on the right hand side there is an example of the block and beam. So we have a suspended concrete slab block and beam method. So if we have a look there and we see the difference here, what we have is we have these little T-shaped beams that uh, would be sitting on top of the load bearing walls so the beams are supported on the external and internal load bearing walls 
rising walls and then in between the beams we just uh, place blocks in there in between the beams in this example then we have some rigid insulation on top of that a damp proof membrane and we're just using the timber deck in this example but this is the block and beam method here we can see in this image note there because it's a suspended floor it has to have a, an air vent it has to have ventilation underneath to allow uh, to allow any moisture build up there to dry out the tour type then of suspended concrete slab is the in situ reinforced slab so we can see that in the photograph there on the right hand side our in situ reinforced slab so we have a reinforced mesh there in place we would have um, farm work usually made out of timber or steel that would support this temporarily underneath and up the sides and then um, uh, the concrete is poured fresh in on top of that there so suspended concrete slab uh, in situ reinforced slab so they're the three types of suspended concrete slabs that we can use the far type of floor then uh, we're going to look at is the suspended timber which is a much more traditional method uh, for putting in ground floors most common in all their houses a raised timber platform is constructed inside the external and internal walls so if you can just see in the uh, photograph here on the right hand side so this is a raised timber platform is constructed inside the external and internal walls and what we have there is we have uh, we have our floorboards sitting across uh, laid down on top of our floor joists and uh, the floor joists then are sitting on top of our timber wall plates you can just see that they're nailed into the timber wall plates the timber wall plates have a damp proof membrane or damp proof course DPC placed underneath them to make sure no moisture gets up into the floor and we can see that these are suspended timber floors so how are these suspended they're suspended on top of these little small brick walls which are uh, uh, called dwarf walls so if we look at the uh, the diagram there on the right hand side we'll uh, to cut away section there we can see a bit more detail there of the makeup of the floor so we have our boards which are nailed across the timber joists just like we saw in the image previous image as well um, and these are sitting on top of uh, timber wall plates and underneath the timber wall plates we have our DPC or our damp proof course and that's to prevent any moisture rising up um, from underneath the floor and um, the timber wall plates are supported on top of uh, the dwarf walls or which are sometimes also called sleeper walls and uh, these are built on top of the oversight concrete and hard core so underneath the timber floor we'd usually have some compacted hard core and then just a, a small slab of concrete which is called the oversight concrete and this is in place in order to uh, give support or a foundational structure to our suspended timber floor just make a note there as well if we just see those little uh, sleeper walls they also have some bricks left out of them so they have to have little gaps left in them uh, uh, every couple of bricks they'll have a brick left out or a half brick left out and that's to allow air to circulate underneath the uh, underneath the floor freely so suspended timber floors continued so we have a minimum 150 millimeters compacted hard core. We can see in the diagram on the right hand side, minimum of 150 millimeters of compacted hard core placed down uh, underneath the subfloor. Then we have 100 millimeters of oversight concrete. This is in order to support the sleeper walls. And another function of this oversight concrete is to prevent any vegetative growth beneath the floor as well. We have on top of our sleeper wall we have our timber wall plate and that's fixed down into our sleeper walls and then on top of that then we have our joists, timber joists which are spaced uh, from 400 to 600 millimeters apart and then these are fixed uh, down, uh, the joists are fixed down onto the wall plate. We also have uh, insulation, uh, which we 
insulation placed in between the joists so usually the insulation is placed in between the joists sometimes supported on top of a mesh or else we have uh, uh, timber battens that are put on the underside of the joist in order to support rigid insulation with a suspended timber floor there must be uh, plenty of ventilation so we need air vents left underneath the suspended timber floor more so than underneath the suspended concrete floor we don't want moisture building up underneath any of the building any building but definitely not where we have timber floors because we want to provide any uh, fungal rot and we want to make sure that all the timber moisture content of the timber stays below that rot zone of 20 percent so ventilation must be provided below the suspended floor to prevent the possibility of dry rot, dry rot developing okay so worksheet uh, question three Sketch a section through a suspended timber ground floor, just like the one we can see on the right hand side here. Summary. In this lesson you covered four types of ground floor construction. Number one was the ground bearing concrete slab, the most common nowadays. Number two was the screed finished floor which is re usually resting on top of a raft foundation so if we use a raft foundation that's the type of floor we'd usually see number three was the suspended concrete slab sometimes used used on sloping sites or when the ground isn't suitable for supporting the concrete slab and number four then more traditional the suspended timber uh, ground floor we also had a go at uh, drawing a section through a ground bearing concrete uh, slab ground, ground, ground bearing concrete floor slab and we also had to go with drawing a section through a suspended timber ground floor